and welcome to the first live Valio webinar. The theme of today's webinar is global food trends with a special focus on health and well-being in uh, consumer-centric innovation. My name is Tuula Hietanen and I'm a marketing manager Food Solution International in Valio headquarters Helsinki, Finland. I'm working primarily with our B2B customers in over 50 countries worldwide. Today I'm joined by Valio's Head of Insight, Dr. Kevin Deegan, who leads the global consumer research and insight in Valio's home market and export markets around the world. Uh, today Kevin will help you to decode some global food trends to help better understand their relevance and how to best utilize them in consumer-centric innovation. We would very much like you to to hear your questions and comments. So please free uh, post your questions uh, in the chat window that should be located in the right hand of your screen. Uh, towards the end of the webinar, I will be joined here by Kevin, where we will discuss the points raised and answer as many questions as time permits. So without Further ado, I will leave you in the capable hands of Dr. Kevin Deegan. Thank you, Tula, for the introduction. And on my behalf, a very warm welcome to our first webinar on global health trends, health and well-being in consumer-centric innovation. In this, the first in a series of webinars, we will break down complex global megatrends into understandable bite-sized chunks which will help you to understand how best to provide solutions to your customers with the help of Valio. Firstly, a little look at what we're going to cover in today's webinar. Valio is hopefully familiar to you, but I'll go through a few facts and figures of introduction to refresh your memory and give you a little bit more insight into our background. Next, I'll introduce you to the global megatrends that affect our industry and influence our, how our customers make decisions at present and in the near future. Following this, I will focus in on the theme of this webinar, namely generic health and holistic well-being, two terms that are widely used and can be quite ambiguous. And then finally, at the end, I'll let you know how Valio Food Solutions can help you in providing opportunities and solutions to your customers. Valio is proud to say that the milk provided by our owners is among the best in the world. Finland is the happiest country in the world, located in the, in the north of Europe, enjoying the cleanest air and water, which is constantly refreshed by the harsh, cold winters and colourful and almost never-ending summer days. Finnish milk has been shown to be among the cleanest in the European Union and the use of genetically modified feed is strictly prohibited by Valio. Valio is a cooperative of over 5,000 Finnish family farmers with a 114-year-old history, which is older than Finland itself. Our products and ingredients are made from 100% Finnish milk, which is 100% GMO-free. We have the privilege of being the only dairy in the world with a Nobel Prize, which was awarded to the Valio Director of Research and Development, Professor A.I. Virtanen in 1945. And it is this sense of innovation and research that still permeates throughout our cooperative, starting from the beating heart of our world-renowned R&D department here in Helsinki. The welfare and happiness of our cows is of utmost importance to everybody here in Valio, so much so that every cow has a name. We are a significantly sized business with a turnover of 1.7 billion in 2018 and we are the largest food exporter from Finland, serving about 60 markets throughout the world. Every 20 minutes a container of Valio products leaves Finland into the world. And most importantly, like Finland, Valio is characterised by something the Finns called Sisu. Sisu is unique to Finns and can be best described as a grit or determination born out of the harsh climate and tough history. It means making the most of what you have and punching above your weight, smartly and effectively. 
Here at Valio, we actively follow and analyze cultural, societal, and behavioral trends, both on a global level and on a market-specific level. Global megatrends express long-term changes or developments in behavior and can be quite slow-moving in progress. Understanding such changes allows us to anticipate and to predict how markets may develop and how this aids in proactive innovation. We have identified five global megatrends, each having an influence on how our customers make decisions and find solutions to their, to their needs and desires. The five megatrends that we have identified are alternatives to everything, regaining trust, convenience, ethical living, and health and well-being. Today, I will focus on health and well-being with the other trends to be looked at in more detail in future webinars. Now, sitting above these consumer food trends is the umbrella theme of naturally functional, which has evolved from not just being a nice to have into being a must have. In basic terms, naturally functional in foods roughly means that the consumers trust and understand that the functionality or benefits of a product are either naturally present or are sourced from natural raw materials. Now, regardless of what you're providing to your consumers, naturally functional has to be self-evident, not just in the product itself, but at every point in the consumer experience. When talking about health and well-being, we can generally split them up into two quite different, but nonetheless overlapping themes, generic health and holistic well-being. The general idea of what it means to have a good life is basically encapsulated by the combination of these two themes, being free from physical symptoms and the general feel-good effects of ethical and emotional well-being. Strictly speaking, generic health can be seen as either preventative or reactive. Preventative in the sense of choosing certain types of foods or avoiding certain foods or nutrients to either ward off or reduce the risk of developing certain illnesses or unwanted health conditions. This is, in a sense, the classical view on health with regards to food. Reactive drivers on general health usually arise either from a specific diagnosis of an illness or condition or on a perceived self-diagnosis, which can just be as just convincing. It is of critical importance to remember that the drivers behind preventing illnesses or maintaining general good health and between avoiding or curing diseases can be quite different in the mind of the consumer. For most people, certain aspects of health are usually not thought about until a problem presents itself. Prevention of illnesses or maintaining general good health requires a lot of willpower and self-control, as well as an awareness of what potentially could go wrong with health. Making choices about what food you consume to aid in this prevention is definitely an active choice. Conversely, Using food or making specific dietary choices to help with or cure conditions or illnesses is not usually done by choice and is often, in fact, compulsory. This creates a vastly different consumer mindset when it comes to choosing what foods to consume, the active optimism of prevention or being forced to use diet or food as a medicine. An example could be found in the issue of lactose intolerance, where being forced to avoid dairy due to an intolerance to lactose could create the perception among some that they are being made to sacrifice. However, with modern lactose-free technologies as pioneered by Valio, lactose-free no longer means a reduction in quality and definitely doesn't mean a sacrifice. Decisions made by consumers driven by generic health concerns tend to be more on the rational side and sometimes connected to specific nutrients or nasties in food. Whereas the exact mechanism of why certain nutrients or food components can either prevent or cure certain conditions may not always be clear, regardless of how tenuous it may be. 
Such misunderstandings can pose a problem for food manufacturers where certain health-related opinions may complicate the consumer decision-making process. A practical example of this can be seen in consumers' attitudes towards sugar, and specifically added sugar. Now, whereas health concerns towards sugar may not be as prevalent in certain categories such as confectioner or candy, health conscious consumers are very aware of the sugar content of staple goods like dairy uh, and may try to choose lower sugar varieties. A rising sub-theme in generic health is that of gut health. It seems that every day more and more is discovered about the complex environment that exists in our gut and the interaction of that environment with our own physiological system and hence our everyday health and well-being. However, the gut and symptoms of gut illnesses are still quite a grey area in medicine. When consumers cannot get answers or solutions to illnesses and symptoms of the gut, they turn to other sources of information. People look for individual solutions for individual symptoms. This shift or repositioning of where people seek information and who they place their trust in is clearly in a state of flux and has grown to a level where there is a clear change happening around the world, a global megatrend that affects greatly how consumers make decisions. And this is something we'll cover in a future webinar. With regards to gut health and gut conditions, the search for information from non-traditional or non-medical sources has in part led to the growth of certain avoidance diets, for example, avoiding gluten or avoiding lactose or dairy, where the link between the food and the symptom is not always clear. However, some general feeling of relief can be found. Whatever the reasoning behind such changes in diets, there's a clear opportunity for the food industry to actively play a role in providing solutions to help with both specific and non-specific symptoms, which can be very uncomfortable and emotional for people. When speaking about generic health, we tend to talk about specific nutrients and specific food types. It's logical and perhaps easy uh, in the mind of the consumer to assign blame to concrete constituents of food, whereas traditional and current official nutritional recommendations consistently promote a balanced diet without either over-reliance on or complete avoidance of specific nutrients. Nonetheless, the nutritional bodies which are currently top of mind to many are sugar, salt, and to a lesser extent, fat. A rising star on the list is red meat. These can either be viewed as a challenge or an opportunity for the food industry, depending on your specific area of production. But what is most important is to directly address these nutrients and to take them as seriously as our consumers ever increasingly do. On the flip side of avoidance is increasing intake of specific nutrients or foodstuffs. A prime and recent example of this is protein, which has over the last number of years become a must across age groups and lifestyles. Whereas sugar is generally considered as bad or even evil, and fat has in part shed its bad reputation, but for most it's still, it's still a question mark, Protein is generally seen as a positive addition to a healthy diet. One key reason for the explosion in popularity of protein and in its persistence as a positive nutrient is that it is generally quite easy to understand relative to the other macronutrients. The basic consumer understanding of protein is that it fills you up and helps maintain and build muscle with little or no mention of any negative health effects. While younger people have heavily embraced including more protein in their diet, older consumers are less receptive to this trend, when, in fact, they have more to gain than other age groups. Uh, that is a need to boost protein intake to, compact, uh, to combat the effects of age-related sarcopenia or muscle degradation. And this represents a definite opportunity for the food industry in the near future, but requires engagement of older consumers in terms of education as to the positive and necessary health benefits 
or protein on their diet. While generic health is mainly concerned with specific nutrients or food types and, if, and the effect that they have on either maintaining health, preventing illness or treating certain conditions, holistic well-being takes on a higher level of understanding of what good health means. An example of this could be making a conscious decision to choose certain brands or products based on the feeling of being part of a movement or contributing to a greater good, like supporting local food producers or avoiding certain packaging materials like plastic. In such cases, the link to specific health issues may be complex or tenuous, but nonetheless, they can play a part in suggesting or promoting elements of health and well-being. While certain holistic well-being issues may positively or negatively contribute to how consumers choose and purchase foodstuff, their influence is ever increasing and cannot be discounted by the food industry. It is important to point out that while generic health issues and decisions surrounding them tend to be more rational based, decisions concerning holistic well-being tend to be more emotional and therefore a greater challenge to producers of food. A perfect example of such an holistic well-being issue is that of the perceived connection between natural and healthy. There's an ever-increasing belief amongst consumers that processed means unnatural. While those of us in the food industry have a very clear understanding on the importance of the need for certain types of processing, such rational reasoning unfortunately does not always influence on the perception amongst consumers. However, this can also be an opportunity for us where we can champion the positive aspects of our food products, increase awareness and education about why certain processes are used, and in general to reduce the taboo and misunderstanding about processing. It is important to point out also that naturalness of a product is not just determined by the list of ingredients but more and more on the complete production cycle, packaging and the complete consumer experience of the brand. Whereas more and more information is becoming available on the effects of our gut environment on our health, one topic which has increased dramatically in the last couple of years has been the idea of boosting brain health and mood by certain food choices and diets. As consumers become more educated on the positive health and brain benefits of certain foodstuff, they will seek out both, both old and trusted ingredients, for example oats, and new exotic ingredients like goji berries to get an extra edge or boost. And again, as mentioned at the beginning of, of this talk, naturally functional is a must have here. This has a very important role in the thought process of snacking which is growing to become a much larger part of one's daily food routine. Whereas previously snacking was almost exclusively unhealthy or sweet based, consumers are demanding more and more healthy and brain positive snacking options in order to stave off hunger, reduce satiety and to improve mood. Now, while this may strike you as a futuristic idea, magical wonder ingredients that somehow make you a genius, an understanding of the consumer need states in question opens the door to more down-to-earth solutions as a food producer. One example could be protein, and more specifically whey protein, which has a reputation of being highly effective, accessible and satiating. Bridging the gap until the next meal is among the key reasons for choosing a snack and having a naturally functional and effective ingredient such as whey protein can go a long way in convincing consumers to choose a healthy snacking alternative. Snacking will continue to become a larger part of the daily routine and innovation based on the consumer demand for healthy snacking with the purpose of improving mood or boosting concentration is definitely warranted in the near future.
This concludes the presentation part of our seminar today. If you'd like more information on how Valio Food Solutions can help you to provide the best possible products to your customers, please get in touch with us through valio.com or through our social media channels. Thank you, Kevin, for that interesting presentation. Kevin will now join me over here so we can answer your questions and comments. So, Kevin, if we go to first question here. So, uh, what specific trends should be concentrated on in order to succeed in the food business? Okay, easy question to start. <laughs> exactly. Um, I think uh, the most important thing is to uh, start from your own business uh, and your, the consumer understanding of uh, your products, for example. Um, it is key to understand uh, what our consumers needs, need states, desires, um, usage experience, and not both, not just of your product, but of your brand uh, in total. So to isolate one particular trend uh, obviously depends a lot in, in, in which area you're, you're working in. But what's important to remember is that um, all of us food producers in, in whatever line of business we're, we're in, we can always find something in these trends in order to um, best um, connect with our consumers and to give them essentially what, what they're looking for. There is um, a lot of, sometimes a lot of confusion in, in terms of what health and wellness means. And I think that if you break it down into accessible chunks, like hopefully we did today, uh, you can start to see that where it makes most, most relevancy for your products and your consumers. Okay, thank you. Uh, and we have another question, and this is about China. So how do these uh, health and well-being trends apply to China, to Chinese market? How do you see that? Sure. Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, we tend, uh, at least in this part of the world, to focus on the Western world uh, and how consumers behave there. Um, but sometimes which, something which is often forgotten is that um, China uh, exists as a, as a massive market as well. Um, we do in Valio an extensive amount of research uh, looking at Chinese culture, societal trends, um, usage uh, situations, for example, for the types of products that we uh, in Valio can provide. Uh, and one, again, important point to remember is to, in order to best serve your, your customers in a market, is to really understand uh, on the ground level what's going on. Now, that could mean visiting supermarkets, visiting homes of, of consumers, um, you know, going through a, a normal shopping trip, or which is something in, in China which is, is much more prevalent than it is in the West, is the online experience of, of making decisions and purchasing food. Um, we can learn a lot from the Chinese market and we can lear learn a lot from how Chinese consumers uh, make decisions. And this is a really exciting opportunity for he us here in the West to think about um, the future of food uh, and the future of decision making. And I think that China for us in Valio is a really fascinating market. Okay, thank you, Kevin. Well, I think it's time to thank you all for your interest for this first webinar of ours. And if you have any further questions, please don't hesitate to contact our Food Solutions sales team. So thank you once again.